This is a short lesson to talk about the standard C libraries for embedded development. And we'll introduce the concept of weak symbols. So I'll talk about the libc library and a version of libc called new live nano. I'll also talk about system call functions and how they are handled in our bare metal environment. Finally, I'll introduce the concept of weak symbols and give an example of use, using weak symbols to implement system calls. There are a number of standard libraries used in C programming. Compared to other languages of its day, C has few built-in functions. So much of the functionality that we think of as C is actually in the libraries. Two of the most fundamental standard libraries for C are libc and libm. libc contains standard general purpose functions that are very commonly used. A well-known example is printf and file io in general. Other examples are the character string functions and functions to get the time and so on. Another standard library is for math functions called libm and it contains things like cosine and log. I always think that the people who came up with these uh, library names back in the 1970s at Bell Labs must have really liked short names. All C libraries by convention begin with the letters LIB and libc and libm use just one letter more. Now these standard libraries are very important for the C language and so they've been standardized in parallel with, with C. This is to help make C programs more portable. Now the main stream versions of libc, for example the GNU version, are considered to be too heavyweight for embedded. They were designed for OS's like Linux and Windows that have lots of memory. So a lighter weight version of libc was created called NewLib. I have to say that is not a great name to give to a library, but that's what they chose. Anyhow, even new live was not small enough for some systems, really small systems, and so there is a variation called new live nano. One of the most visible differences with nano is it can't format floating point numbers and functions like printf. It doesn't sound like a big deal, but it adds up, and probably a lot of very small systems don't use floating point. For STM32 projects, the IDE we are using provides new live nano in a binary or pre-compiled pre archive library. The source is not provided and we'll talk about that now. As I just mentioned, the IDE provides new live in binary form and not the source. I like having source for my embedded systems, as it is sometimes helpful in debugging or just to see how some function was implemented. So I went looking for the source. I wanted to walk you through how I did this. You might not find this interesting, but as a developer, you do spend some amount of time doing things like this. So I started with the release notes for STM32 Cube IDE version 1.6.0. This was the IDE version I was using when I did this. Now the release notes state which version of the GNU toolchain it uses. And the toolchain is available at developer.arm.com. And looking for at the release notes uh, for this version of the toolchain, it says it uses newlib 3.3.0. And by chance, I found a file in the IDE, in, IDE installation that has the version number for, for new live. Uh, it also says 3.3.0, so we're pretty certain. Now, where to get the source? Well, it seemed to me that the best place would be developer.arm.com. And you can get a source distribution for the tool chain. And here is the file name. And that source distribution contains new live nano source. But here is a small problem. STM, ST Microelectronics has patched and rebuilt new live. Fortunately, they document what they did in this PDF, um, 
which is in the IDE installation, but they didn't provide the source. ST, ST Microelectronics should be publishing their updates as this is open source. I have not found modified source code, but to be honest, I haven't spent a lot of time looking. If we could get and build the source, then we could make changes if we wanted, and we could also have the source accessible from the debugger. Still having unpatched source can be a big help. I will end this lesson with a discussion of system calls and use it as a way to introduce weak symbols. In OSs like Linux, programs call system call functions to request services from the operating system. This would be like opening a file or creating a new process. Exactly how this works is something you would learn about in an operating system course. These system call functions are in libc. For bare metal, we don't have an OS, so stm 32 cubeide provides a syscalls.c file with stub functions that generally return an error. This syscalls.c uh, file is part of the IDE generated code. In the syscalls.c file, a few system call stub functions are declared as weak. I don't understand why they aren't all declared as weak, but that is the way it seems to be. So here you see an example in the syntax that is used to declare this function symbol as being weak. In other, in other words, the underscore right function is weak. Weak symbols, such as functions, can be overridden at link time. Let me explain. You might remember that when we talked about symbols as part of the build process, that the object files contain a symbol table. Well, that symbol table can indicate that a particular symbol is weak. So, so normally, the linker will return an error if there are two symbols with the same name the linker wouldn't know which one to use. But if one is weak, then the linker will ignore the weak one. So weak symbols can be useful when providing a library or, or software platform when you want to allow an application to override a uh, function. So here is an example. The syscalls.c file contains an implementation of underscore write, but it is tagged as being weak. So that, implement, so that implementation will be used by default, but say we define our own version of underscore write, but not tag it as weak. Then at link time, our version will be used rather than the weak version. By overriding underscore read and underscore write, we can provide a more Linux-like I.O. system, for example, printf and uh, fprintf. In fact, we will be doing this in a later lesson. I should point out that weak symbols are used in a number of places in the IDE generated code. One example is interrupt handler functions, where you can override the default interrupt handler with your own code. So that's it for this lesson, and thanks for watching.